Hey, it's James speaking. ChatGPT did it again. Brand new feature came out yesterday and I'm going to tell you about it because it changes everything yet again. <laughs> every time I come on, every couple days, it's like some AI tools changes everything again. Um, fortunately or unfortunately, the one that they announced yesterday is one that is going to change a lot for a lot of people, even if you're not in the education space. What am I talking about? I'm talking about the new shopping agent or I guess you could say shopping assistant that has now been built in directly into ChatGPT. And it doesn't matter if you're using the installed version on your computer or if you're using the web browser, it doesn't matter if you're a paid uh, user or an unpaid user. This is available to everyone now for free and it's starting to be rolled out. Uh, I do have access to it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how it works and then I'm going to have a little bit of a talk about what it means moving forward if you are wanting to get involved in all of this AI stuff and especially how it's going to change and affect shopping. So uh, just in a nutshell, this is basically a tool that replaces what we normally do with purchases online by going and doing a Google search, getting a list of products, clicking on the links to the products, going and evaluating them, trying to go to another site and find out a comparison between them, and then go and try and figure out the best price. What this does is it allows us to go directly into ChatGPT, and as long as we're running the 4.0 or 4.01 mini, I think, um, all you need to do, this is the one that's free to everyone, and it's the default one, the 4.0. So you just put in a prompt that's shopping related or product comparison related, or so show some kind of purchase intent, and it will actually do that. So I said, uh, I'm looking for a Compact Ninja or Cuisinart dual compartment air fryer under $300. Uh, can you recommend some options? So I'm just going to click there. It knows obviously that I'm looking for some kind of product. Again, this can be any prompt that you want. It can be the ones they use in the example are uh, ear pods. Could be something that is a coffee maker. It could be any physical product. And I'll get to the other types of products after. But hey, it's brought them up. And it says a couple things. Local retailer in Canada, if you can see that. What that means to you and me is it knows where I am. It knows physically where I am. And it also knows the currency that's appropriate to me. I just said $300 from a local retailer. I didn't say $300 Canadian from someone who is in this particular area. Whatever my ISP or my location of my internet surface, this is exactly where it comes from. And what happens is it will show a, a carousel of some of the options that are available to me from the local re re uh, retailers and or online purchases that a Canadian can make in Canadian funds. And there's another thing that's interesting with the carousel. If you look, it's got best overall, versatile cooking, space saving, compact toaster oven. And on that one, it didn't have it, air fryer basket. So what does this mean? Well, we can click on any one of these, or if you scroll down, you see it says, here's the explanation of them. We've got a carousel of what it is, but we've also got an explanation. Which one's the best overall? Which is the one that's most fertile? Which one has the best uh, space saving area? And at any time, you can see these are clickable links. So if I want to go take a look at it, I can just click best overall. And then lo and behold, what shows up on the sidebar now? A direct purchase link to, in my particular case, I've got three options that are under my $300, but they're all the ones that are close. So I can order online from Ninja Canada. I've got Amazon CA and a place called Tangay, Grizzly Shelter, Walmart is here, Shoppers Drug Mart has them. You can order them, Wayfair, Best Buy, Staples, Rona. These are all local retailers and they all have the particular prices. And at any time I can go and just click on the link and it's now opened up to the ninjakitchen.ca website and it's brought me specifically to the product to purchase. And look, I even got a 10% off a discount. So think about what happens here. I'm in a position now where normally I would have had to do a whole bunch of different searches in ChatGPT and then tried to figure it out and or I would have been in a completely different platform like Google and doing the exact same thing. 
This is all in one place. It's shopping and it's done with the direct purchase links. So you're probably going, James, okay, that's great. Uh, if someone is going to retail some stuff, that's great for e-commerce. What does this mean to me if I'm selling educational content or I'm selling digital services or digital products? Well, the thing is the exact same thing happens. I was playing around with it and I was trying to figure out, you know, what's going to happen uh, with the assistant. So I said, you know what? Um, I want to go and find out what's actually going on here. So what I did is I started asking ChatGPT, you know, what are the things that I should uh, be aware of here? So let me just open up one of the different things that I had and I'll open up the chat that I had. Um, and let me go with this. Yeah. So here's the thing that's kind of interesting. Um, the way that this comes up with the results is really, really interesting. And it's something that we have to be aware of because irrespective if it's a physical product or a digital product, info product, online course, any particular product, the way it comes up with that listing when we search is important. And it will search, it actually will search on courses. I did ask that, uh, I said, um, uh, where's the one I said? Uh, yeah. So I said, yes, ChatGPT shopping assistant can assist you in discovering, comparing, selecting online courses and educational content, whether you're seeking to acquire new skills, delve into specific chop, uh, subject or find courses to align with your schedule. It can guide you through the various platforms and offerings. Uh, and it had some sample props here. And I said, um, what was the other one? Can it offer direct to purchase links for online courses when they're available through major platforms? Look what it says, Coursera, Udemy, edX. And when the, the course recommendations, it offers curated options along with it. So what does this actually mean to us and how is this actually fitting into it? Here's the thing. The way that these come up is fundamentally different than the way that these listings come up in Google. Google does something called search engine optimization. It is a keyword or keyword phrase or, um, and all of the stuff that goes around it, but it's about the keyword and the phrase. It's not about the natural language or the intent that is being put in to the request to a tool or a large language model. So right now, product suggestions are not ads and they're not, and are selected independently based on this is the one here, user intent. Now there's a couple things that happens here. User context from the current query, previous chats, memory, and preferences via the custom instructions. So if, for example, you have a particular brand that you like, or if there's a particular vendor that you like, you can put that in special instructions, right? Um, price, reviews, relevance, and ratings, they're based on factors, again, that are there, but it also, are third-party data sources. This is the one that's going to be interesting because it looks at the data that it's collecting from the vendors, the product SKUs and the information, and then it's also looking at third-party data sources. So that means a couple things for us. First of all, they're not ranked. There's no affiliate links here. It's a direct checkout, so they're not skimming anything off the top but third party and public sentiment and generated by uh, budget friendly. It's organized by context by ChatGPT. Price, reviews, relevance, and ratings due to user preferences. So I'm playing around with this and I'm thinking, okay, great. What does that have to do with courses right now? Well, if I go do a search, uh, search on courses, let me just pull one up and you'll see what happens. Uh, I'm just going to go. And again, I, I put some of these, uh, put together some of these after, uh, let me just do this one. So uh, I'm going to say list uh, free courses on graphic design. And I'm going to put them in and we'll just do a search on that particular one. And uh, let's just put it in and see what happens. So I'm looking to learn about graphic design and I want one that's not too long. I'm going to say, um, and uh, let's say we're going to say under $100. So free, uh, free. Uh, I'm going to say list courses on graphic design that can be complete uh, that uh, are priced under a hundred dollars. 
Okay. So I'm doing a search not for a physical product, but I'm doing a search for an info product or an educational product. Again, it's going to go search out the web. And remember what this search is based on. It's based on having access to that product description, the titles, the SKUs, all of that stuff. It's looking for third party references or third party directories. And then it's also using ChatGPT to figure out where does this one fit in from the ones that it has collected. So here's some of the top rated courses that it has. And these are links to the actual courses. Now, if we go underneath and you can see that there's a carousel here, we've got all these different particular ones that are available. And I've also now got a list to them and I can click on them exactly the same as I would if it was a physical product. The different thing that happens here is when I go take a look at this one, let me just do a one on Udemy because it's one that we know this one's actually free. I'm going to click it. And what happens is it goes to the actual search for free courses on Udemy or the listings. Now, I have seen some of them go directly to purchase the course. It depends on where it is. The bottom line is that if we're selling digital products or digital services, people are still going to be able to use this. They're still going to be able to say, compare these two courses or which is the best course that I can purchase on this topic for this particular price. This is going to change everything again for every person who is buying stuff. This is more than a search engine. This is now an assistant, a digital assistant that helps us through the process of evaluating and making buying decisions. This is really, really cool. And again, um, it's going to bring up a couple things and I'm going to talk about it in the next one, but I want you next video. I just want you to think of this for a second. Um, I wrote a book called get ranked first on Google in the early two thousands. I think it was that whole thing about search engine optimization, that whole industry has been upended yesterday because it's not search engine optimization that we're looking for. It's large language model optimization. I've actually put some charts together on the differences and how we're going to have to change how we sell our products and services and specifically courses and online digital content. That's all going to change. I'm going to cover it uh, in the next video. So if you haven't already, please like and subscribe to my channel. Love to have you be part of these. I do one or two every day. And if you haven't already, please make sure to go to trainingsites.io forward slash join. That's my personally branded campus where I teach all of this stuff about starting, building, and growing an education business. My name is James. Take care. Expect the best. We'll be back shortly.